Hey there YouTube, it's Math Buller. Welcome to my second of two purchase recap videos from the Baseball Card Castle Holiday Celebration that was held on Saturday, November 18, 2023. I'm doing a rare thing and actually showing a purchase not too long after I actually made the purchase. So this Baseball Card Castle is located in Cranberry Township, Pennsylvania. It's by far the best sports card shop around their selection is just insane it's literally it, none of the other places compare i mean i'm not down i'm not crapping on the other places but baseball card castle is amazing so i'm going to be showing you items that were um normally in their store and then there was some special tables that he put out just for the event and the first one i want to show you is my favorite i love to collect autographed baseballs and dang this was an interesting one john wayner was a former pirate player he hit the last home run at Three Rivers Stadium for what it's worth, and then he became a broadcaster. And the story was um, the owner, Jeff, had purchased this off of a photographer whom, you know, at John Wayner's very first broadcast. Um, two different pens were used for the sweet spot there, but it looks like it was written in the same hand. And honestly, uh, you know, there is Pirates at San Diego. And we got a lot of different broadcasters who autographed it. We got Lanny for Terry, and there was no doubt about it. Yes, we got yes, that's cool, cool stuff. There's my man Steve Blass. Good luck, John. Steve Blass. We got Bob Walk. You know, broadcasters from that time. Greg Brown, who is awesome. And that's it. So it's like you got all the other broadcasters signing whenever, um, yeah. He had his very first game. He was a broadcaster. Do I get John Wayner's autograph on this? Maybe, maybe not. Seems like it wouldn't be right unless if there was a cool inscription to get added to it. So I couldn't grab that baseball fast enough. That is a really, really cool item. And he did knock some price off of that thing. He knocked almost 20% off. That was an $80 ball that he had for retail. And he sold to me for $65. That's so cool. This was a $25 baseball. He sold to me for $20. You know, about 20% off. We got a Manny Sanguian logo ball. Look at this. Really good stats. Guy doesn't get enough talk. Especially outside of Pittsburgh. But, um... It appears it was signed in a black Sharpie, and this is on a leather photo ball, a china ball, a pleather ball, whatever you want to call it, but that autograph has held up. I have looked at this baseball in his store for well over a year, and it's like, okay, the autograph hasn't started to go bad. I'm buying it. I have one almost exactly like it, so now I have two, and that's cool with me because I do enjoy Manny Sangian. Then he had a table with a bunch of autographed footballs on it. They were $25 each or two for 40 and I found two of them. We got a Super Bowl 43 logo football here. Signed by Dick LeBeau with the Hall of Fame inscription. It's like, yeah, I'm not passing this up for $20. I have a nice football already signed by him in silver. It looks great. My plan for this is, honestly, I'm going to put this into an, they call them like Chinese auctions, a little raffle basket. Our family, and if it's not our family's fundraiser, there's plenty of other fundraisers where if you make some raffle baskets, you know, raise money for a good cause. This would be something to put in there, throw some trading cards, sign trading cards, sign the next cards in there, maybe a t-shirt, whatever. And all of a sudden, you're going to get a lot of money generated from this basket. So that's probably what's going to happen to this football. Now, if I'm wrong and I don't have that signed Dick LeBeau football that I think I have, well, I'm going to use that one then. Keep that. <laughs> and then we got this little mini Domino's Pizza football. It's a little bit on the dirty side, but I search signatures online. It looks righteous. This is cool. I mean, it could clean up, but it's like if I clean all the little panels, well, I don't want to clean this panel, then it's going to... No, I think it's beautiful the way it is. Did I really just get a Chuck Knoll autograph for a $20 bill on a very unique item? Heck yeah. Oh my gosh. Um, 
worth the trip right there. <sighs> um, I have one other main purchase here. Uh, he did throw in these vintage penny sleeves, these vintage card sleeves. They were, he said he threw them, he threw those in for free. But um, the only other thing to show you was his ten dollar table which he's really cool about having $10 tables during these sales. Pretty much stuff he buys from people that bring stuff in this store, and he just blows them out. Except they were also um, $10 each, 6 for 50 or um, 13 for 99 bucks. And I got 13 items here. Starting with James Conner signed photo. He made an appearance at Giant Eagle, and it was probably one of those days where it was just the photo only that they would sign this store photo. Um, they, no outside items, and I just got that. I didn't have to wait in line or anything. So James Carr is no longer with the Steelers. He was a Pitt running back, Pitt Panthers, and a Steelers running back. Very cool. We got a lot of, like, magazine pages. I know this one's personalized to John Best Wishes, but Steve Furness is not an autograph you come across too often. He did pass away relatively young. So that's just a really cool item right there. It doesn't matter to me. That's personalized. Apparently, Carnell Lake made an appearance out of Sears. And I got the store photo. Nice. I mean, 13 items for 100 bucks. I mean, you're talking like just under $7 an item here. That's great. We got a magazine page here signed by... In blue pen, Matty Alou. You don't pass up that deal for Matty Alou. Heck no. Bob Bailey. It's not like autographs of Bob Bailey come around. Bob Bailey, the only reason why I really know Bob Bailey is there's at least one or two high number cards from the 60s I'm trying to get of his that are pricey. <laughs> Jim Bibby. Very nice. Nice to have him in the collection. Is this like considered like a press photo? I, I'm not entirely sure, but to me it's a photo. Nice. Steve Blass. I never saw this particular postcard type card. It's like a 4x6 roughly. And man, those normally dreamy eyes of his are like really, really glaring at you. Nice stuff. That's his older autograph. Very cool to get the Steve Blast. Nice. And speaking of getting the Steve Blast, we have him on a magazine here as well. In case you didn't know, Steve Blast is amazing. Mm -hmm. This appears to have been an original Sports Illustrated cover. Why it was ripped off and then cut off, oh my gosh, it's beyond me. From 1960, the year they won the World Series, before that season ended, you know you had Dick Grote on the cover. Dick Grote just passed away not long ago. There is in a, what appears to be a thin blue Sharpie. Good stuff. Don't see Ed Kurt Patrick autographs come along, just like the Bob Bailey. You don't, you don't see that, so I'm going to pick that one up. Yeah. Someone took the time to take a couple newspaper clippings and scan it. Now this piece of, it's almost like a piece, oh, it's just not a piece of paper. Fortunately, the paper has some damage here. But, um, yeah, when Lloyd McClendon, Lurie, stole first base, he was unhappy with uh, a call, and, yep, and we got signed right on his fanny. Yep. That's a neat item. Al Oliver on a magazine page. Al Oliver was really good, really good. And Manny Sanguian. Oh, there's one more item to show you. I'm trying to think to myself, how did I... I don't think I'm quite at the amount of money that I paid here, and then I realize what's behind here. Yeah, Manny Sanguian. So I added an autographed Sports Illustrated magazine to my collection. It's from January 28th, 1980. I believe this would have been right after Super Bowl 14. I could be wrong. I, I, I probably am. The Steelers would have won a Super Bowl. Their fourth one. Team of the 70s. We got John Stallworth. Normally this would be my favorite, and it is TriStar Authenticated. There we go. With the Hall of Fame inscription. It looks like it did have a postage label that was very well removed from it. On the very back. I didn't look through the insides of this. On the very back, 
I did not even bother to take a look and see whose autograph that could be. After this video is over, I will take a look and see who were Steelers who wore number five. Looks like it begins with a J. You know, um, anyway, dang, that's cool. Magazine itself is in pretty decent shape. But my favorite was this, Love Signed Baseballs. And what a unique piece, probably the only one like it in the world. Let me know in the comments below what was your favorite baseball card castle holiday celebration in Cranberry Township, Pennsylvania. Wonderful. I upload a TTM video on Mondays and an autograph and or trading card video such as this on Wednesdays and Saturdays. I really would appreciate it if you would like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Take care, everybody.